Raw photo editors are a popular sector of the software scene and it's a truly international one too. In fact, every well-known raw editor originates from a different country. The UK has Affinity Photo from Serif Labs. The Ukraine has Luminar Neo from Skylum. America has Lightroom from Adobe and Photo Raw from On One. Lithuania has Pixelmator Pro. Denmark and Greece have Capture One from Phase One. Canada has Aftershot Pro from Corel. Sweden has Focus from Hasselblad and France has Photo Lab from DxO. Now, the reason I mention this is that there is something of the flavor of the country of origin in all these raw editors. Affinity Photo being British is as mad as a box of frogs. Capture One being Danish is slick and understated. Photo Lab 6, meanwhile, being French issues conformity for innovation. Much has been said about Photolab 6 recently with an article on F-Stoppers recently suggesting that it knocks Lightroom Classic out of the park. But is this true? So let's get the housekeeping out of the way first. Photolab 6 can be purchased subscription free for a one of cost of 219 US dollars. By comparison, Luminar Neo is 149 US dollars one off. Capture One is 299 US dollars sort of one off. On One Photo Raw is 99 US dollars one off and Adobe is of course expensive and subscription only. The competition for all raw software and the app they are all measured against is of course the mighty all conquering Lightroom. This means that like all the other raw editors Photolab includes a file management module and like all the other raw editors it's fairly rudimentary. Little more in fact than a file system tacked onto the editor. That's not necessarily a bad thing of course. Many photographers prefer a simple file management setup. If you work with two monitors then you can emulate the Lightroom workspace with a thumbnail browser on your second screen. Images in that thumbnail grid view can be sorted and filtered. It's a simple but effective setup. The raw editing features of Photolab are accessed by clicking on the customize button. Customize is a strange choice of words and one I normally associate with an app's settings, but whatever. There are docks on the left and right of the screen and the various modules can be placed in either of these docks or floating above. This means you can make it look similar to Lightroom if you want, or you can in fact close the docks completely. Compared to Affinity Photo's contrived interface, it's a joy to configure and to use. By default, all of the global image editing tools are placed in the right dock and grouped into broad sections for light, color, detail, geometry, local adjustments and effects. Nothing has to stay in this order, of course. By selecting the advanced workspace option, you can rearrange everything to your particular workflow. There's also a toolbar at the top of the screen for access to tools such as the eyedropper, healing brush, and image window controls. Now, I mentioned all of this about the interface because being able to easily and logically work your way around the application is nearly as important as the end results. The good news is that Photolab's interface gets out of the way and complements the workflow rather than impeding it. So let's talk about the guts of this software, that raw engine. And the first thing we need to say is that DxO do of course have a storied history as experts in camera, 
lenses and films. They created the famous DxO Mark website about 15 years ago as a resource providing laboratory grade tests of camera equipment. Then a bit later they leveraged that knowledge to create the DxO Film Pack which emulated famous films for digital cameras with unprecedented attention to detail. So it's fair to say that this software is far more capable of bringing out the true strengths of the Myriad camera lens combinations and pretty much any other raw photo editing app. They have more than 400 fully calibrated profiles for digital cameras built in and they keep the database up to date. As someone who shoots with a Fujifilm camera, this is important. Lightroom only barely supports my X-T4's X-Trans sensor and sometimes does such a lousy job of rendering the raw file that weird worm artifacts appear in the image. Take a little look at this image. Lightroom's on the left and Photolab on the right. Both are zoomed in at 400%. Only very small basic edits to highlight shadows, white and black points and small vibrance tweaks have been applied. In Photolab, I've enabled the deep prime denoise tool and in Lightroom I have applied as much luminance noise reduction as I can safely get away without totally killing the sharpness. Photolab's done a far better job with noise and colour rendering, I'm sure you'll agree. It's a far superior image in pretty much every way. Now let's take a look at this shot. Lightroom on the left again, Photolab on the right. Photolab has found all sorts of detail in that area of clipping where the sun is that Lightroom has not. And as if that's not impressive enough, this is with no tweaks, local or global, to highlights or shadows in Photolab, while in Lightroom, I've backed the highlights all the way down to minus 100. So it's evident that Photolab's doing a far better job right from the get-go, straight out of the box, than Lightroom. By way of comparison, I also tried a few edits on RAW Photoshop on my old Canon 7D Mark II and found similar results. The Deep Prime XD algorithm in Photolab is not compatible with Fuji RAWs, but it does work on Canon RAWs and the resulting denoised image is excellent. As good as, if not better than Topaz Lab's Denoise AI. It's fair to say that I was impressed by Photolab's capabilities. Clearly, DxO's world-class technical background has given them the edge over other raw editors. There are some outstanding tools in Photolab that I found to be equal parts powerful and intuitive. You can find an HSL tool in most raw editors these days, but Photolab's the first one I've used that I got instantly and which proved to be the most useful. Selecting colors, increasing the color range and then manipulating that range is ridiculously simple. And I applaud the DxO team for having such a genius visual implementation that works so well. Software companies love sticking the word smart on tools in their apps, but the smart lighting tool in Photolab is one of the few that qualifies for the name. The genius of smart lighting is that it combines the two most used sliders in every raw editor, the shadows and the highlights, and it merges them into one single super efficient slider. Simply move the intensity slider to your desired look and watch as these shadows emerge from the darkness and the highlights are protected. The Clearview Plus tool doesn't have the word smart in front of it, but it feels like it should. This is obviously DxO's version of the Lightroom Dehaze tool, but I found it to be more useful. Lightroom's Dehaze is one of those all or nothing sliders in which you don't have to move it very far to the right for complete overkill. And while Clearview Plus can produce dramatic effects, it feels more balanced than Dehaze. One area in which Photolab is a long way ahead of the competition is with noise reduction. Lightroom only has traditional luminance and color noise reduction, but Photolab's got a world-class AI-based tool built right into it. The standard Deep Prime tool is brilliant and in this version 6 upgrade DxO added Deep Prime XD which is unfortunately 
Not compatible with the X-Trans sensor in Fuji cameras, but when I tested it on Canon RAW files, it did the most effective noise removal I've ever seen in any app. The only downside to this tool is that you only see the full and complete results of the denoising after you've exported the file. So does all that smoke I've been blowing up DxO's ass mean that I have ditched Lightroom for Photolab? No, I have not, but that's definitely not because I found the raw editing lacking in any way, but simply because nothing gets close to Lightroom's digital asset management. As impressed as I was with the many features of Photolab, I have not retired Lightroom due to a couple of compromises that DxO made with Photolab. The biggest issue I have with Photolab is its masking tools. They are not no matter how much DxO big up their U-point technology, a match for Lightrooms. Firstly, the masks are not AI based at all. I realize AI masking is relatively new feature in raw editors, but it's one I've quickly grown used to and I'm not prepared to give it up. Photolab has a tool called Auto Mask, but in reality, this is no different to the auto edge detection in Lightroom. I also found it to be no more effective than auto edge and suffering from the same flaws. The control point masking and control line tools are okay, but no more effective or useful than the old luminous or color range masks in Lightroom. However, the really big problem with the masks in Photolab is that you can't intersect them, only add or delete. Quite often I create an AI mask in Lightroom and then intersect that with something like a luminance mask centered on the sun so I can boost the surrounding sky without blowing out the highlights. You could do the same thing in Photolab by deleting parts of an existing mask and adding a new one in the unmasked area or by tweaking luminance or color, but it's extra steps to take and it's not as precise. The other problem I have with Photolab is pretty much the same beef I have with every raw editor that isn't Lightroom, and that's asset management. It has the basic tools, star ratings, color flags, and basic image grouping, but effectively it's just a very simple file manager tacked onto the raw editor. Some people are more than happy with that basic functionality, but the more advanced asset management features possible in Lightroom, smart folders, smart catalogs, full database driven indexing, multiple catalogs, cloud synchronization, plugins for extended functionality, metadata presets and stacking are all features I use on a daily basis. So when an article suggests that Photolab knocks Lightroom out of the park, it patently ignores the fact that Lightroom is as much a digital asset management suite as it is a raw editor. One other feature that's missing from Photolab is a map. Again, this might be something other photographers only rarely use, but for me it's indispensable. Quite often get called up asking for photographs of a particular location, and it's ridiculously easy to find all the good shots using the map and Lightroom's sophisticated filtering tools. I suspect that DxO are fully aware of Photolab's asset management shortcomings and are not, in fact, trying to compete with Adobe at that level. Apart from anything else, the installation process for Photolab adds plugin support to Lightroom. The inference on DxO's part is that you can use Lightroom for managing your photos and Photolab for processing them. As someone who's more than happy to use external editors alongside Lightroom, I am more than happy with this arrangement. One area of post-processing that has blown me away in Photolab is image recovery. Over the course of the last weekend, I've been the official photography at a country show here in South Coast, New South Wales. One of the events I photographed was the rodeo, which took place after dark. Consequently, I shot at very high ISO, knowing how awesome my X-T4 is, and also in the knowledge that I could run my photos through noise removal software if required. I decided to shoot some images at a higher shutter speed in order to get the subject as crisp as possible, but even at 12,800, the images were too dark and very noisy. I'd resign myself to rejecting all of the shots I took in that batch. When I decided to run one through Photolab, 
and I'm very glad I did. I'll put the photo up on the screen and show you the best I could manage with Lightroom next to it. I reckon these results speak for themselves. Photolab recovered far more detail from the initial import, but when I then added clear view, smart lighting and deep prime noise removal, the results are, I reckon, nothing short of mind-blowing. In most ways, Photolab 6 is the best raw editor on the market. DxO's unparalleled knowledge of the technical idiosyncrasies of every camera and lens and camera-lens combination on the planet is evident in the app's top-notch raw rendering. It's not a digital asset manager, though, and to be fair, DxO, it doesn't really pretend to be. The question is whether you're happy to use different applications for asset management and raw processing. For me, the convenience of having it all in one place in Lightroom is a big plus. One strong option would be to pair Photolab with Adobe Bridge, which is, of course, completely free these days. No two raw editors produce identical processed images. No matter how much or how little you use their tools and sliders, the end result is always different. And so while I was often impressed by how Photolab performed, I usually still went back to Lightroom for processing because I just preferred the way my photos looked. I should stress that this wasn't a technical issue, purely a matter of personal taste. Now that my free trial has expired, I'm giving serious consideration to buying Photolab. I'd like to have it on hand as an option when I want to use an external editor, and that's viable because it's subscription free and therefore not an ongoing financial commitment. All things considered, Photolab comes highly recommended. If asset management, AI masks, and a map tool are not something you care about, then it will make an excellent choice for a principal raw editing app and that'll do it for this video guys what's your raw editor of choice is asset management a priority for you or an afterthought let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed my video please flick me a like and consider subscribing for more photography and drone related content in your youtube feed. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.